Okay. All right. Well, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is September 27th, 2023, and Paul Allison is in his luxurious vacation home, I think, in the south of France, if I heard that right. So, yeah. Um, so we are going to talk about um, Jessica Early's book, uh, Real World Writing for Secondary Students, and in particular, one chapter which is um, demystifying the college admission essay genre. All right, so why don't we do some quick introductions? Want me to start? Sure. My name is David Cole. I've been um, enjoying coming here on a regular basis. I work with a little nonprofit called NextMap. I'm a longtime teacher who moved into technology and spent a lot of time through the dot-com boom and then beyond working with tech and literacy. And in that arc, had a, the pleasure of working in a number of really great projects with the NWP. And so um, AIs arrived, and of course, I turned back to them to see where they were going with this, and that led me here. So nice to be with you all. I'm Bob Montgomery. I, I also have a distant history with NWP, not as a as a writing project teacher, but as a consultant who helped with their some of their original uh, community building online. But I am a former teacher, and I am really excited about the possibilities of AI to support uh, both my learning and the learning of my colleagues at West Ed. And I'm Jesse Early, and I'm a professor of English education at Arizona State University, and I'm also the director of the Central Arizona Writing Project here. And I've been involved with the Writing Project since I was a first-year teacher in Portland, Oregon, with Linda Christensen there. Wow. Um, and all my work is in teaching writing. So this is, I'm really excited that we're using some of it. Uh, and I can't wait to see what, Chris, you've done with AI and to work with your students. I'm Scott Christensen, and um, I my son is in Chris's class right now, and oh. my wife used to be in Chris's class. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I do. I'm a. I've. I'm in. I've, I've taught grades eight through eleven ELA, and um, and I'm currently a coordinator for my district mm -hmm. for secondary ELA, and. I've been really stoked about just sort of AI. Um, I went to open house and I started geeking out with Chris and then Chris said, go to this thing and check it out. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> nice. And we've got, are you, guys, are you guys in the same building? I'm just, just so I'm following Scott, you're uh, you were actually a student of Chris's. Did I get that right? My wife, my wife oh, yeah. was. Yeah. Okay, now, you're, now you're an educator in Chris. You guys are in the same building or the same district. No, no, I'm in I'm in a, a large district in Utah. Okay. And then yeah. Chris is a judge. Yeah, and I'm at a high school, not in his district. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I have his son in my class and then I taught his wife. <laughs> okay. Not, there you go. Yeah, yeah. All right. And we have Fred Haas here. Hi, what are we introducing? Yeah, a little introduction. Gotcha. Um yeah, I my name is Fred Haas. I am um an English teacher in the Boston suburbs. And um, last year, or last week, rather, we had um, uh, one of my students that wrote the piece. So I kind of just want to see where things went from there. Thanks. Yeah, uh, I missed last week. I was at parent teacher conferences last week. But um, I did, um, I talked to Paul about your student, Fred, and um, read some of the stuff um, and saw the piece and everything. So pretty bright. Right kid, that's for sure. Yep, for sure. Nice. Well, um, so maybe I'll start with just talking about what I've been up to. And you can feel free to interrupt me if you would like to. So um, <clears throat> to start with, um, you know, way back in the summer or, you know, before that, but, you know, summer-ish, I think, um, Paul and I were putting our heads together about how to, you know, how can we use AI to maybe leverage to support our, our student writers. And so I was like, oh, you know, one area that I think it may potentially help would be on the college admission essay. 
because basically, you know, and I surveyed my students about this too. And I said, um, do you need help with this thing, this genre? And they're like, yes, that was overwhelmingly, we would like some time to do it in class. And then the second most uh, requested thing was like to meet with me. And the things that were least requested were meeting with their peers in peer response groups. Like that was at the very bottom of the whole thing. And, you know, we talked about it and I think, you know, I kind of knew why it boils down to two things. What they're writing is kind of private, you know, really private. You know, some of that stuff is touching and uh, it's meant for this anonymous audience. So, you know, they, they really bear their souls in a lot of cases. Um, not all, but, you know, in a lot of cases. So that, that was one. It's like, do I really want to share my private story with my peers? And then um, number two, they don't necessarily trust their peers' um, feedback in this setting particularly because, um, you know, like if I'm bearing my soul, I think as a peer editor, I just want to say like, that's awesome. You know, like I want to support you. That would be the natural thing I think kids would do. And I think they knew that. So they were like, let's, let's not do peer review. So then that's when um, Paul and I, um, but Paul, I mean, when I say Paul and I, I'm really like Paul, he does the heavy lifting, right? And um, so um, we thought, uh, well, maybe AI could help in this setting here. And then um, we came upon Jessica's book, um, Real, World, Real, Real World Writing for Secondary Students. And in there, there's this chapter demystifying the college admission application essay genre. Um, <clears throat> and so that's where we started. And, and then we wound up with, what I wound up with was really four scripts, four, uh, four prompts that AI um, helped my students with. So um, the other thing that I think is helpful in this setting is there's only one of me and there's 50 of them in two different sections so um it was a way to get if it worked if it was helpful feedback it would be a way to get helpful feedback to them more timely than than i can possibly do it and i'm happy to sit down and meet with them but those take you know probably a half hour minimum each time after yeah. school or before school right because yeah. i don't know how to do it much much um faster yeah. so that's kind of the background for what we tried to do um any questions or comments so far Chris, hey, darshna. hi darshna hello everyone hi there chris you're going to go over the prompts again i i think you you yeah. uh, worked with them last week but i'm really i'm struck by the outline that your prompt sets present both for you and the kids and also what they might lead the AI to do in terms of how it organizes. Mm -hmm. but that's great. Yeah. So um, maybe I'll share my screen if that's OK. Might be helpful here. So I will. Well, can you help me move? I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, you're good. In the uh, if you hit your arrow SA. key, if you hit your arrow keys, it'll take you. Thank you. Place. Yeah, you're welcome. Whoop. And if you go too far, you won't hear us. So I'm going that. to be in a different playground. <laughs> nice. And um, Darshna, while you're there, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, hi, everyone. I'm Darshna Katwala. I'm uh, the uh, director of the Long Island Writing Project and a professor at NASA Community College in New York. OK. And um, Darshna, we're talking about how AI could possibly be helpful for my seniors who are writing college application admission essays. So um, to give a little background, um, so I will try to present here. Let's see if I can do that. OK. Now you may be seeing a bunch of us, but I think if I were to do that again, Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll go there. Okay. Um, so this is based on, can you see um, a now comment screen? 
screen? Yes. Yep. So um, to begin with, Paul put the chapter four of demystifying the college admission essay genre into now comment. And so if that, or, you know, if you're, if you work with seniors, um, I read this and it was actually pretty informative for me as their teacher, um, because I've been teaching seniors for a long time and um, college has come up. But um, I guess I just, I only went by the directions that like the common app gives you, which is basically here's the prompt, an essay about it. So I always looked at it like it was a narrative task, so they should tell a good story. And so um, this is a nice uh, description. Um, Jessica, you want to talk a little bit about your study, just an overview and, and what's behind this chapter? Sure. So this is a study that I did um, a number of years ago with two different classes um, at a large public high school. Um, and all the students are first generation college bound, um, majority um, second language learners. Um, and they, are, we came in and I taught the uh, college admission essay genre and used all of the things that are outlined in the chapter and really wanted to demystify the genre for students, the audience, the purpose, um, the sort of the expected moves of the genre that, that are, are sort of what counts. A genre that succeeds is one that has the expected moves. And so I wanted to figure out what those were. And I collected a whole corpus of essays that were submitted and successful to getting into college ahead of time and studied the genre myself um, and then created these mini lessons, which are now really what you're using, Chris, to create these templates and tweaking mm -hmm. to work better in your space and also on a using AI. So that's what we did. And it was hugely successful okay. teaching. Um, and my interest in the college admission essay and in teaching writing in general is um, opening up the classroom to these real world high stakes genres that are beyond just the um, test or five paragraph essay. Nice. Any comments or thoughts for Jessica before we move on? Just, I mean, in the world of um, K-12 and moving from into post-secondary or secondary, post-secondary, this is sort of the capstone of the whole thing, right? To have a authentic real world statement, right? I mean, every piece of writing is sort of given this position of being authentic if there's an audience and that can be created in all kinds of ways, but the audience for this thing is very high stakes. And so mm. the whole, the, the art, the dynamic, very high stakes. you know, the dynamic, also, of, yeah, yeah go, ahead. go ahead, sorry. The, the setup of, of audience and what students are gonna do with that and the privacy concerns and the desire to succeed and the role AI could play in that. It's a very atypical and important scenario, which technology for once is supporting in a way that it often doesn't. It often feels ancillary or supplemental or helpful, productive, but there's something that nests really well to what you were, you're, you're doing with this. So I appreciate the outline very much. Okay. I was just popping something into the, uh Chat it's also an interesting genre in that it's often taught either in advanced placement or college bound classes. Now right. it's taught in avid classes. Yeah. Um, but it, it traditionally is a genre that was like rich kids would get these really expensive workshops on how to teach. Yeah. You know, right. like it, it and kids who don't have parents who went to college and have never written these essays or put it at a disadvantage. So it's high stakes for many reasons, right? Yeah, it is. And, I, had a, and, I, I did a, in San Francisco, I, I created a full semester college and career readiness course as the city revamped its college and career graduation requirements. And the, you know, the writing levels for that group of kids over across the day is seventh grade, right? And so there were a lot of sort of scaffolded writing exercises seeking to create the kind of scenario you're talking to directly. So it's a hugely important thing that, of course, is taught in senior year for kids who are ready in that. But it, it, the, the perspective and the skill set is applicable 
in number in a bunch of years. Yeah, so, and, and I would add also that not only can the more uh, advantaged kids afford these workshops and afford like people who almost write the essays for them too. Yeah. So like it's it's definitely in the past I would say it was you know that there were some advantages built in to the whole system obviously. Okay. okay. So. Um, so anyway, this is, you know, I put a link, I think, into the chat to this um, study, this chapter that Jessica takes us through. So what I did next was I tried to put it in my own words, um, something that I could share with the students. So I kind of stripped out Jessica's thing. She talks about like the study as part of it, but I kind of boiled it down to, you know, here's what you need to know about this college admission essay genre. And so, um, you know, so I shared this with the students because I think it was really important for me to not just drop AI on them, um, but to explain like why I thought AI would work in this particular setting for them. Um, and so I tried to explain that in just as few words as possible. So things are straight from Jessica's book. And, you know, some of them go without saying, I think like, you know, selecting a strong writing topic. Um, this one though, you know, I, Jessica kind of touched on it, but I never really thought much about the people who are actually going to read these essays. From me perspective as an English teacher, it was more like, oh, here's the prompt. Are you addressing the prompt? Great, if you are. And that was kind of how I would approach it in the past, I would say. So that part, I would say I was a little lean on. I, I definitely, you know, I, I could do this, you know, write an effective introduction. And I could, I think I was pretty good with like, let's talk about using description. But this one, writing the so what, I thought was really, really helpful, Jessica. So the writing the so what as part of the genre is to step outside the narrative to emphasize the significance of the particular topic and lesson learned. Share why the story represents the writer's unique interests and potential contributions to a university community. You know, so like tell a great story. I've had a lot of kids tell good stories, but this the idea of the so what I thought was pretty helpful. And, I, and I'm going to share some of the feedback from the students today. And I think you'll see like they agreed actually that the so what was pretty helpful. Um, and it's an interesting yeah. thing in this genre that makes it different than a common narrative because a narrative can stay within the internal telling the the, the story it, it needs to in some way connect to the audience right but in this way you are making an argument for an audience to get into college so the so what really matters in a different way right it's a turn in the essay yeah and i could talk to my students about um you know, like there's narrative writing and then look at all of a sudden you're writing argumentative writing in the same thing you know so like it i'm teaching rhetoric so it's like a really nice spot to talk about that so anywho um i thought all of these things were really helpful but you know a, a few of them really were different for me and so i learned a lot i guess as in their teacher doing this too so um what all and i to a lesser extent did was um, this idea of taking Jessica's, you know, how to write a successful introduction. Well, that is actually um, a template that's using AI on uh, uh, youth voices. So I don't know if we need to stop and slow down and look at that, or should I just talk about what we were trying to do here? Maybe just talk about what you're trying to do. Okay. So, you know, these are Jessica's, um, like when she was working with these students, she physically was in a room and saying like, we noticed, I think Jessica, you want to talk about where these three things came from? Basically like any good writing workshop, we noticed that students weren't doing these things, weren't grabbing readers' attention, weren't like calling the audience in to the piece. And so we gave them some strategies to do that with and some repeated patterns that we saw across successful essays. This is also just across good writing. Um, so starting with a question, bringing the reader in using dialogue, 
or a compelling anecdote, a powerful quote. Um, so giving examples of that in a mini lesson form, like you would in any writing workshop, um, and then having them try out these different options and then picking one that's successful. Yeah. So then Paul and I's, my thought was, can AI do this? Right. Could AI look at a tech and say, could it say like, oh, um, here's some ideas for asking questions or, you know, based on what the AI is analyzing in their essay, here's suggestions for an anecdote um, or, you know, think about how to use a powerful quote. So the, the step that I think we've done with Jessica's work is to turn that into a prompt that the AI can then implement looking at their writing. And Chris, this gets back to that question that came up a few weeks ago where the AI gets that prompt and then spits back sort of like an example that the student might say, that's great, I'll just use that. Like it's fully written or is it sort of a parallel use case that yeah. the student would reflect on and then modify or is it almost like ready-made? I'm curious about that. And have no, it's not ready-made. It's more like advice. Yeah. And, you know, we could demonstrate, we'll demonstrate one of these things anyway, where it doesn't give them like, Hey, here, you go. just mm -hmm. paste this in. It's more like, have you thought about using, mm -hmm. you know, let's, let's go to the next one. Like, have you thought about using senses? Sure. Um, and it'll say like, when you talked about your, your brother, or William, um, what what did it look like in that room? So it's yeah. it prompts them with more questions because Jessica's chapter is doing that. Yep. Okay. So in the same way that Jessica, I, this is the hope. In the same way that Jessica didn't write the things for, him, she led them to think about their writing so that right. they could do it themselves. Okay. So, so AI you know, becomes the th thinking partner. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we used chat GPT. Well, a plugin for chat GPT on the WordPress platform. So that API is not collecting students' personal data. So um, we're using chat GPT, but it's in Youth Voices website. So it's not collecting student data because it's an API. So I felt like really important to yeah. tell kids because they are fully in <laughs> to chat GPT and I can't tell them enough. It's like, it's, it's miraculous, but it is collecting data on you and will be used in ways that you don't. So like, let's try to be smart about what we're doing with these things. And so that, that seemed like a good, so yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Just an aside on the surveillance side, you know, I, I saw it on Twitter, I don't, which I can't tell if anything on Twitter is real or not anymore, but there was, um, there was a comment on the re recent release of Bard, right? And they were noting in the posts that some of the searches that Google's coming up with are actually referencing queries that people are making to the AI as examples. Mm -hmm. So it's, I was like, really? Is that, what, is that really happening already? Or is that just release and the release issue? But to your point, I mean, these large language models are ingesting and storing and doing things with stuff that gets entered in those spaces. So it's nice that it's an API and it's nice you can speak to that. Yeah. So, you know, that that was important to me. Um, yeah. So any questions at this point or requests? Okay, should we see, um, do, you, do you understand what's going on or do we need to demonstrate something, I guess is my question. Because I have my, I, my student did this and then they, I asked, I gave them a survey, how helpful was this stuff? And so we talk about what they, they said about the help that they got. Or I can show you like, here's an example of chat GPT and the so what persona at work and then do that. If it's, I'd love to see an example of the student yeah, doing it. And then that would give a, that would remind me of the baseline and the comments. Okay. I feel like they would be that much more useful. Okay, so I'll, um, let me, 
go to this. So here's us. Can you all see it says sample college essay? Yep. Yes. Okay. So here is, um, this was a, a middling draft of an essay someone wrote a few years ago. Um, and so I'm going to just apply the chat GPT, um, the so what to it. So I'm going to go up here and we're going to uh, open up AI Mojo. I'm on youthvoices.live. I'm going to open up the AI Mojo. You know, I'm doing a live demonstration and, you know, what could possibly go wrong in live demonstration? But we'll give it a shot. So I'm going to go over here to the chat GPT. And I am going to paste in this essay. And I'm going to change the persona. If you see there, I'm going to change the persona to so what, which basically, just so you know, is this scripted so that AI look for these kinds of things. So we, we're going to be finding out if, did that just get bigger for you? Looks good. Okay. So we're going to to find out like here what we want chat GBT to do in the so what persona when you write personal statements like the college admission essay you're performing your identity I like that performing your identity in a way that the audience will enjoy with or relate to nice. this means there must always be a point in the essay where the writer steps away from the story and speaks directly to the reader to make a case in the narrative for why you should gain admission to a college or university this is referred to as the so what section of the essay and this is me, by the way, paraphrasing Jessica's work. So this is the part of the essay where, as a writer, I've changed the vo I've changed them to them, right? So this is the part of the essay where, as a writer, you need to move back from the story and describe the lessons learned or the reason the story in your life. The so what is the place in the college admission essay where the writer must do more than share personal experience? You must connect to an outside audience. This is also a place in the essay where the writer shifts from telling a story to persuading the reader why it matters. Making this rhetorical shift can be challenging. You probably have had a lot of writing personal stories in school, but not writing why these experiences matter to others. That's what's behind what hopefully is about to happen here. Um, so I'm gonna paste that prompt into um, the so what persona, I'm going to hit send. And so now it's going to generate some kind of response based on the so what prompt. So it's thinking. And students are doing exactly what you're showing. Yeah, yeah. So they would have done this today. And so um, if I zoom, can you see it better or is that not showing up? So did you, can I just clarify, did you copy the sample essay and yeah. paste yeah. it in? Okay. Okay. So, and this is the feedback. Your essay's vibrancy comes from the passion for action you've conveyed. In spite of the vivid storytelling, your so what section could be more prominent, where you persuade the reader why your story is significant beyond your personal context. I invite you to reflect. <laughs> How does your pen for acting and business entrepreneurship make you a better student or fit for their program? How do your experiences provide unique perspectives you can bring to the campus? How can these passions contribute to your long-term goal. Remember, this section isn't only about sharing experiences, but connecting them to your reader. Which aspect of your narrative would you like to dive into more? Your acting, entrepreneurship, or ways the passions intersect? And so, you know, this is generative AI. So at this point, the students, I told the students, like, okay, choose something. So I would say, I'd like to think more about my acting, let's say. And so, and let's see if it gives me something here, right? So this is generative AI where I'm now engaging with the bot that's thinking along the so what kind of persona, right? So, you know, you, they, that's something right there. So let's delve into that. That. Reflect on how your acting relates to the broader picture, your future studies and career. And, um, you know, and, and then to David's point earlier, it's not saying here's how to do it. It's prompting with questions on, um, you know, what to do. And then it always ends with ready to take your narrative to the next level. <laughs> so let's address these questions. So, you know, it is in, 
indefatigable. Um, it's going to keep coming as long as I can go. So that's an example. I like the language in this reply because I was wanting to see it in the previous one, which was the remark to address the questions. Because by asking questions, it's implied, well, you're, I'm going to answer them and, and, and take the answers and then, but, but what do I do with those answers? Like, so um, let's address these questions. That, that's at least some form of coaching, which justifies that I've just given you some questions. Now with your answers, there's a big next, so, you know, what do I do with my answers? And how do I take my answers and weave them in to the essay? But that level of coaching is what I would love the AI to be able to do is both ask questions, but also help know what, know how to think about their, their use. Mm -hmm. uh, other thoughts? Just in terms of the workflow, uh, you as student would now go back to the draft and sort of start to respond or is the, does the draft start to construct here in the, mm. in the right side channel? in terms of at what point did, have you found students taking the, they do a couple iterations on feedback mm -hmm. and it's, it's nice to see that the feedback structured now as a set of questions inviting a response. Do students typically pause and kind of go back to a draft in another window yeah. and then refill it or what's the workflow in terms of where this is happening? I'm just, it's kind of an interface question. So, yeah. so at this point, it is controlled chaos in yeah. the classroom yeah. because some kids like yeah. kids, my thing is still spinning. And <laughs> yeah. no. kids, I'm not even there yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So some kids are ready. And so at this, I don't know the answer to that. I know that a lot of my time was like making sure that people were where they were. Yeah. Because I went through a lot of steps there that, that aren't the most intuitive to even get to the yeah, I can imagine just thinking if I if I for a moment just think of myself in a bell schedule in a classroom, just getting through the steps you've taken us through is the better part of a period. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. which which is already a huge accomplishment to sort of the, the the literacies and the question making and the rhetorics that are already on the table by virtue of what you just walked us through, and the doors are now open at the bottom of that text box on the right. That, that that's a that's like a period's worth of stuff. So, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, the, the building blocks of getting a draft made are not mysterious, but they're, 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 there's a lot of legwork, and it's it's exciting to see how much comes out so quickly. But I don't take that for granted, and I wonder, just in terms of pacing, as you go through this this semester, it's going to be really interesting to see how the iterations sort of build. We listened to your your student Fred last week. I kept imagining how she was writing, right? While she was talking, we're seeing the finished document at CNN and she's speaking so thoughtfully about the inputs from her dad and elsewhere. And, you know, people write, you know, who knows when, who knows where, and it gets done somehow. So there's just a lot here. I'm really curious and excited to see how this moves ahead. It also makes me think about, and sorry, my screen's getting dark, I'm in a car and it's actually getting dark outside. So I may just turn totally dark, but I'm here. Um, the thing that's so interesting with just the way the AI and the template has students sort of in their text, jumping out of the text to think about it differently, mm -hmm. getting conversation. It's like, it's literally like having a writing conference, right? Or like I spent hours yesterday re re responding to a student's dissertation proposal and making comments in the margins for, of the Google Doc. And a lot of the, the time that I was taking to do that, I was asking questions like these, like what's your so, you know what I mean? Like, so I just think okay. it's really smart and helpful. Yeah. Do those, um, this is again an interface question, Kristen. I've just not hung out in the Youth Voices version of the chat GPT playground enough to know. Do those comments sort of stack up as notes that you can go back and look for? Yeah. You can reload the like a session and see where I was. So if, if the bell rang at the end of that and came in next tomorrow in the C block with you, I could open that up and get that and sort of start writing to those questions. Uh, the notes don't um, stick 
you know, like once you close your browser. So I do tell them copy and paste anything you find helpful uh -huh. into your Google Doc or, or into the body of the Youth Voices post. I was having them do that because they were right there. Sure. Um, so the, their their essays are not public because they mm -hmm. didn't want they don't want to be public. But at the bottom of it is kind of like my feedback on you know the introductory one, my feedback on the chat GPT, so what persona? So yeah. it is kind of a, you know, more than just their draft. It's their feedback about the feedback, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so um, anyone else thoughts before I keep going? Because I did ask, I, I thought what was kind of interesting today was then um, I asked them how helpful this all was. So this was yeah. our at least our third session of using this. So the first time we just did a couple, like one or two, one and two. And then the next time we came on, I said, let's use this so what thing. Um, and then today we just did the conclusion um, uh, genre, the conclusion template. So then today I was like, I would really appreciate some feedback on how helpful this was. And I do tell them, it's like, I, my, my ego is not tied up in this. If you do not like this, that is quite all right. You know, um, you just let her rip uh, on what you think about what was it helpful or not. And so I thought, you know, their feedback was interesting. So I thought maybe I would share some feedback if no one has any other questions or anything. Okay. Okay, so can you see a spreadsheet? Yeah. Okay. Um, here's the survey that I had them um, respond to today. So it's called AI Feedback on Your College Admission Essay. And it says helpfulness. For the following items listed below, indicate the extent to which you agree or disagree with the following statement. Feedback I received was helpful. So if they felt like it was, you know, helpful, they strongly agree, they put a one. If, you know, they kind of agree or whatever, you know, uh, if they're not sure for whatever reason it's a four and then all the way to seven would be strongly disagree, like it was not helpful. Um, that so then I had them just fill out this thing and do quick little explanations about um, each of the four. There's three templates: the lead, the introduction, the description. Then there was the chat GPT, the so what persona, and then there was the concluding the essay. So they gave it a little scale, a score on the Likert scale, and then I had them explain. And so um, what? You know, I'm not I'm not going to say that this is statistically different, but um, the lower the number would be, the more helpful. So um, down here, you can see that if you know, based on a sample of 24, which you know is not a huge sample, um, it looks like the group found the so what persona um, to be the most helpful. Oh, well. And um, so I just thought I would pop into there and just. I, I did rank, you know, I sorted them by most helpful to least helpful. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, oh, and by the way, you know, full disclosure, I did have to recode these because <laughs> some kids are like, oh, no, I did it backwards. You know, I did disagree, agree. So I was like, all right, so do it again. So I had to take out their first thing. And some kids on their way, I was like, oh, I really did it backwards but you could tell their numbers by, by like they'd put a seven by something that said this was a most helpful thing so a few of them have been recoded but it's only like three so for what it's worth full disclosure um but i think it, what's here still holds true that um so here's some students and why they thought the so what thing was helpful very helpful like they strongly agreed um, I think it was, this student says, it, it helping me stem ideas. It is not doing things for me, but it is showing where to look. Um, 
somebody, another person who strongly agreed, you know, you can see there are a lot of people who strongly agreed. I, I really like this portion. I was able to get useful feedback. I have real responses on the questions I asked. I feel like it made my essay way better. Um, and then here's a couple about what Jessica talked about, uh, uh, the knowledge audience. This helped me know how to improve my essay specifically in the eyes of a college admissions person. This really helped me because I didn't know how to relate it to the colleges that I'm applying to. I didn't know how to say why I would be a good candidate for their college. Um, yeah, so that's some of the helpful stuff. That's an impressive number, Chris, the averages. and Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. And then I thought, you know, just for, you know, balance, why, why didn't some of them be helpful? And um, the things were, I just feel like it, it didn't strongly address most points. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe this one a little bit better. I do not want to use the so what introduction method because I do not think it goes with the essay. So you can see some of them are being critical, like I didn't like it. It just didn't help with getting new idea. I think this one also told me a lot of things I already knew. I kind of feel like the so what is implied while chat GPT wanted me to include an entire paragraph explaining it. I feel like that is, uh, that is to, I feel like that is to outright instead of just sewing it into my ass. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, not everybody liked it, but in general, I would say people found it helpful. And I'm always, leery of these kinds of things because like if a teacher is really fired up about us students will be fired up about it too so i did try to say like, really i don't care you know like you can just pan this stuff it's fine you know the whole point was is it going to be helpful which was my original assignment i asked them this is on a little canvas page my question at the beginning of this whole thing was, can artificial intelligence give you helpful feedback on your college application essay? Let's find out. So I feel like I didn't I didn't try to persuade them to make it all, no. you know, gung ho and everything. So uh, interesting. Uh, I also think it's interesting thinking about, I mean, we don't have this comparison, but like, I'm sure in the classroom when I taught this in person, It'd be interesting just to see how successful they thought my feedback. I mean, I'm guaranteed. I mean, all the research shows that most feedback teachers give is not taken up or helpful for um, for students in the writing process. So this is huge to see that it's helpful um, and that a lot of them are taking it up. Um, I mean, it just makes me wonder, like, if another class next door was doing this and was getting the feedback in in a you know writing workshop with no AI, how would they take that up, or how would they perceive of that? Um, and anything with any audience, there's going to be some who don't take. You know, there's plenty of times as writers we have editors say or people say, "I think you should do this," and we're like, "No, I'm not going to do that." Um, so it's also savvy sometimes to like this one student who said it didn't seem to fit with my essay or what they were going for. So that might actually be a really smart move on their case. Like mm -hmm. in their, it's just interesting. And some of the kids too are farther along in the process and that colors things too, where like I'm already done and I don't really find this helpful. Um, and that's good to know too, as like in this one, the introduction, you know, a lot more, it's, um, wasn't as well received um uh, the like you know the voice was not particularly helpful it gave me advice to use a powerful quote but i don't particularly think this would assist my essay somebody says uh i feel it's just very general feedback nile not, not dialed into anything <laughs> um so you know they are there is a critical lens they're, they're putting to it um so i thought that was good did um does the, does the feedback and the, the, the does the thinking partner um, break down sem sentences? The questions that you shared were sort of I don't know the, this isn't exactly the right word, but they're aspirational. They're suggesting new perspectives that could be brought to the table. Um, they're not sort of going through and 
marking up a sentence, like saying this might be a way to try to say something. I remember just as a as a writer student, it was always helpful to have someone sort of model an example, just a small one, with my mm. own language. Um, does the thinking partner do that as a part of its built-in function, or is that not sort of? No, I think you know these were based on these particular um, scripts, so to say from. Yeah. Jessica's findings. And so, you know, stuff didn't factor into sure. that. I guess Jessica would probably be better to answer that. Yeah, Jessica, uh, sentence level sort of modeling and response and feedback, is that something that's you have at your disposal that you think of when you're training teachers? Or I can, I, I think if there were, if, if there are versions of that that AI had access to, the information. Kind of like Grammarly, is that what you mean? Like, I, yeah, I don't even not even spend enough time with Grammarly to even know. But um, I think of the expert when you're in a one to one, you speak certain ways about certain phrases. Yeah, you you notice the, this phrase confused me because of this thing, and you could go in your marginalia, you could fill it all up and say this construct you said didn't I didn't really understand it, and you could give me really directed feedback where your interpretation is explained through my language. Yeah. Which is different than what if you thought about this? Could you find a quote? I mean, yeah. you know, I so think I'm, that's I'm a different that's level. I don't, what I was really interested in, in the teaching the college of mission essay at this level yeah. was providing an understanding of the genre so that students could mm. cover it. And then what I think you're talking about, but I might be wrong is more of a, surface level revision it's not surface as in less sure. important but yeah. it's like the next step sure. to final yeah. polish sure. um and i also think it's often what students get rather than the other yes you get the final polish without the other feedback um right. and then the other thing that isn't in here that is in sort of and i'm wonder about this in ai like when I taught the mini lessons or when I teach um, genre of any kind, I provide model texts right. so that they're seeing examples um, sure. and moves that writers <laughs> make, other writers their age, other, in this case, college admission essays. Um, and so I do wonder about uptake of feedback. Like if you don't see how powerful a quote could be to grab, I mean, I'm thinking about my own kids and teach like, developmentally, the answer is always no at middle mm -hmm. school and high school until they see something that convinces them otherwise. Does that make sense? Oh. And there's a lazy factor for almost all writers. <laughs> like yeah. I've written it, it's done, it's working, it's good enough. But so then I just wonder, we did do that, Chris, a couple of weeks ago. Didn't it create different examples for us? It did. Mm -hmm. I don't know if those are the same though as model text. It's well, yeah, it is, I guess. It's the AI generated model text. These are like, I don't know. I guess you're, I'm you're raising, a, you're raising a key point that I've not had to think about because I've been out of the classroom for a long time. But, and I don't even know if it's realistic to think about introducing these levels of, of interventions, wrong word, of um, connection at, in a classroom. But to your point, introducing genre and perspectives that go with it looking at a model text as a sample exemplar, going into surface level, meaning sort of actual set construction as an example and sort of getting an, getting an engine working at that in those three steps feels very useful and, and very much re about like real life when you go through this as a writer or when you do it with a mentor or a person you trust. And um, there's a lot of overhead to that, but that feels very valuable. As, as, a, as a process. Yeah. Huh. So I, I, I mean, I'm kind of wondering, because I guess there, there's a part of me that always finds like some of the stuff just like slightly unsettling because it's not an actual human being. Right. And ultimately the audience that you're writing for is an actual like living, breathing human being. Right. And so, and I don't want to be dismissive, but like, I mean, you could give a kid a list of questions that mirrors the texts. 
I mean, it doesn't have that. It doesn't have that simulated um, instant response as if there's a real person, I guess, which is, you know, I don't know. It just makes me f sort of feel like it's a little bit gamified in that sense. Um, but it just seems, I don't know. I, I, maybe I just, I'm suspicious because like one of the things that like Jessica just said that I, I was reminded of whenever I've worked with students one-on-one -on, -one on a college essay, um, especially if it's not in a class situation, they just want some help or whatever. I mean, the first question that I always ask every kid when they bring something is how willing are you to start completely over before I even read this? <laughs> right? Because that really dictates then the kind of feedback that I'm going to give them, because if they're more willing then I'm, I'm going to be much more invested in like walking through some things with them and, and making different kinds of suggestions where if they're like kind of, well, no, I mean, I, th I, I feel pretty good. I just kind of want to know, like some more, um, you know, overall sort of tweaks or whatever, it, like that completely changes everything. And I don't know, perhaps I'm naive, but I do sort of wonder, like, I mean, is, is a machine really capable of doing that? And I, I, I do feel like some of the stuff is kind of generic, <laughs> which yeah. I guess is not all bad, right? Because everybody's yeah. at different places, but, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I guess I'm just sort of skeptic, I guess, but um, yeah. But I think it's really helpful because when, when I'm thinking about it, I'm like, to be really honest, like, I'm like, this is awesome, but it doesn't replace the, like, when I'm teaching it, not that it's better or worse, but there's like the human element and there's like check out and in a physical, physical way, that's not the same. It does feel like a robot. Cause it's, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? But there's like, Hey, check out this example and like physically looking at it and highlighting it. And I know you could do that online too, but I just wonder, like, there's also what you just said, Fred, about the authority of, and the, human connection that comes with reading someone's story when you can do that individual conference you can't though always do that when you have 50 students and 50 essays right. and you're also trying to get them so i wonder like what we were talking about like david about the kind of scaffolding of different kinds of you know you could start with model texts in person reading model text and then move to these templates for a rough draft and then do um feel safe and comfortable then do like a peer conference and then do a polish with and then do a final one on one I, you know that's like an ideal world right yeah um i can also imagine in a classroom setting inviting the students as part of the assignment to pick a paragraph or a set of sentences they're especially proud of maybe two-thirds of the way through the draft so that they can select what they want. They don't have to share the whole thing. To your point, Chris, at the start of these things, these are oftentimes very private and very personal and students aren't interested in a wide broadcast. Though they're very interested and dedicated to unknowing who their audience is because there's a goal in this piece, right? But there's something that happens when you read out loud in a group, right? And you share in a group and you get back. You, to your point, Fred, it does feel really wacky and a little bit weird, right? And you, when you encounter a student and say, how willing are you to go there? I mean, you're sort of changing that. You're setting up a real contact and they have to say, actually, I'm not that into it or sure. And then you know where you stand and giving students the chance to take work they're proud of, select things like a portfolio move, share it out publicly, voice it, then go back. I mean, I, I keep jumping back to how do you manage the bell schedule, the pacing of this stuff? Because yeah. it's so easy to get lost in this maze of tech. But um, but so many modalities and perspectives here. I'm just fascinated by this and so interested in all of this work you guys are doing. Uh, so I, wanna... know, Chris, I wonder, I, we don't have to do this. We don't have time now, obviously, but I do wonder, it'd be really cool to see like what students started with and then what the text looked like after they engaged with the AI and took it up or didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to touch on Fred's skepticism too, though, because part of me is like, 
are they when they, they first do it there's always this like oh my gosh this is so fast and they're not uh, some of the ones i'm thinking of are not all that critical when they read it it's just like wow there's the wow factor this shiny thing just did this thing that's magic so is it still in the early part of that phase of where they're just wowed by the just the the swiftness of the reply and then also the human element is something that comes up in class a lot um it came up today a number of times where it's like i want you know i want somebody i want a human to talk to about this and so i look at it like where i left it at the end of class today was i think we're you're in general your essays are farther along than when i saw them the real rough drafts a while ago and now if you really want to come in and talk to me before or after school about what we've got going. And I think that in general, I would say that they feel more confident about what they have, uh, whether they rejected the feedback or not. But I, you know, I don't want to lose track of the, like, it is for a person, you know, we don't want students writing for machines. That's not the ideal audience. And so, um, you know, I don't want to lose track of the human part, but I'd still think like, some of that feedback, no matter how generic it is, does it's looking for some of the same stuff that I would have. And, and I feel like, you know, maybe that is helpful to a point. I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, I, something David just said reminded me, too, of like uh, one of my I mean, it's an anecdote. Right. It's not like uh, rooted in a lot of data or anything, but, you know, like one of the best exchanges that I've had with a student in this sort of vein is, I mean, I'll, I guess I was the one in reading it. I read the piece and I, I said to them, like, I think this line right here, like, you know, three quarters of the way through the page, I think that's the money line. I think that, I think you open with that line. Right. And, and I, and, and they weren't convinced, you know, like at first, but it was like, and I can tell you still, I can still tell you what the line was to this day. It was like, it, like 12 years ago or something. Right. And it, because the, the kid was talking about working with, with children and how um, they often like rub their hands together because they get, they get, when they get nervous, they get cold. Uh -huh. And the line was my hands, get, my hands get cold when I get nervous. And I was like, open with that line yeah. <laughs> and then explain how 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 you get there right like yeah. because that's like arresting and and sometimes i you know i end up finding like when I, maybe this is just with the with kids that are really committed and invested and and you know um and that's sort of a separator but um oftentimes the conversation is are you willing to be bold enough and maybe do something that's a little bit risky and and runs against the grain of the genre just a little just a little not so much that it's totally a violation of it but enough that it like really do, does actually grab somebody's attention and it isn't just sort of like this thing that we talk about as being like a hook or something like that mm -hmm. um, yeah and, and on some level, I feel like, can a machine do that? And and I I know too, right? I am only one person, and I often will say that to students. It's like, you know, it is only feedback, and I'm just one person, and you can disagree with me, and you can do what you want. It's ultimately yours, um, you know. But I, you know, I I guess you know I'm doing this for a reason, and I I, I suppose I have something to offer. Um, so it's up to you, right? But what a what a I, I can't I. I don't know. There's a part of me that's like, is a robot going to say that's the line? <laughs> well, you know, you, one hopes the robot would be able to say that's the line and explain <laughs> briefly why, right? In theory, you'd get a sort of simulacrum of that urgency that you're you're sharing. It reminds me of there's that Kevin Kelly, the guy, the, the founder or, or first editor of Wired has published a book recently and it's out and around. And it's a, it's a bunch of writing recommendations. One of them is something like, when you have a, if you have a hard problem, just write it like a letter to a friend and remove the dear so and so at the front, <laughs> right? You know, it, it, there's all these little tricks which you know when you hear it from him in an interview or I hear it from you, Fred. I'm like, oh yeah, and could the machine inspire me to feel urgent about it? That's a question. Could the machine even know to ask it like that or propose it? Like I that? do have to say, like, 
I hear everything you're saying and I agree with it, but to push back a little bit yeah, please. in terms of equity and access, mm -hmm. yep. most students in this country do not have a student doing, do not have teachers doing what you're doing, Fred. Yeah. Or what Chris, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's what I'm interested in with AI is that can it provide a base level of support that students need to get that essay actually to the place where it is a genre that's acceptable. Not that they, and I don't want to be deficit about all teachers and students right. or anything, but I'm more interested in the issue of equity and access. That's why I got interested in and wrote this book and did this study in the first place. And in my work around genre is that I think demystifying these for students who don't actually get that. Yeah. Um, is really powerful. I don't see it as a replacement, I think, um, but wow. as access for people and students who aren't getting it. Yeah. You know, it strikes I think, me. If I go, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I think like, you know, while we might not see it as a replacement, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that there are people that do. <laughs> I yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I don't like that either. You no, know, and the whole promise of these AI tools is that they're going to do exactly what you're talking about, Jessica, that they're going to sort of unilaterally sort of level the playing field, all the cliches you want, which have enormous impact in huge ways across demographics that we can't even count. That said, it's like there's sort of potentially two modalities to the design of these tools. One is the one you're describing, and there's a second one which could be turned on like a switch by the user or by the teacher that might try to go to a more personal engagement that sort of extracts things for the purposes of having a more urgent response and seeing when, and then it might be settings where that's appropriate, but I take your point, Jessica, it's absolutely right. And that's what those tools propose to do. That's why they're so hyped and it's kind of understandable. I have, um, I don't know, 90 some odd secondary teachers that I work with in ELA. Yeah. And last year we pushed, or we didn't push, but we did a lot of training on just the importance of a writing conference and the, a lot of the teachers struggle because, you know, they had classes of 40 kids and they're just like, I can't get to all the kids. So why even do it? And then the pushback was you get to as many as you can and then, and keep moving. And, and so when I look at this, I'm like, this is something that would allow my teachers then to be able to, the other kids could, you know, students can be using this while they're the teacher to, to student writing conference is also occurring. So there's always feedback happening at certain levels. But I, I agree with Fred, my fear would be like, like Utah has probably the worst AI grading thing called Utah Compose based on six traits. And, and, and a lot of people wanna fall back on it and use it as a summative grade. And I'm like, <laughs> it's formative, that's, and it's crap. You could like copy Lincoln's uh, Gettysburg address and put it in there and it'll fail it. It'll give it an F and you're just like, okay, this isn't, you know, so I, I get that fear right there. Um, I am interested too, though, in um, after reading through chapter four, and I, I keep trying to think of Jessica, your work through the lens of why is it that our kids are encountering this type of writing only in their senior or junior year? Why aren't we seeing this earlier? You know, um, I, I get that it has to be separated and all that, but why aren't we seeing this as, a, as its own style of writing that's happening throughout? Um, and one thing that has been, I've been chewing on quite a bit this week and last, and I was talking to somebody about it today, was just that concept of efficacy where you did the Bandura questions with your students. And I'm curious if Chris, um, if you and Paul had done that Bandura survey to see if the efficacy, what happens with your student efficacy by using this um, as, you, as you move forward. I don't know. So, Yeah, I mean, informally, I could, um, I get a sense for student self-efficacy just in some of the comments that they've done about their essays, about the feedback on the AI. You know, like one person who I was pretty sure was not the most skilled writer said, you know, this is really helping me because it is giving me confidence. And so there's definitely a link. I, I can't say that I've measured it, but, you know, just anecdotally, I feel like there is um, some a linkage to like how helpful people find this and self-efficacy. Um, by the way, I'm dimming my camera every once in a while because it's uh, my my Wi-Fi here is a little low, so I'm not trying to be rude on you here when I still my camera. 
<clears throat> anyway, um, any it's you know ten after eight. Any closing thoughts? Uh, I'll just I'll just put this out there. I really appreciate the chance to spend time in a genre because it, it feels like that this is such an echo chamber of inputs and potential directions and. It's helpful for me to to sort of stay in a genre and, and sort of get my bearings in relation to what that genre means and all the things that have come up today and other weeks. So, thanks for uh, pushing this forward. Yeah, I love seeing what you're doing, Chris, in real time. That's amazing. Yeah, and well, so you're, gonna, you're going to stay with us, Chris, through the semester. Like at the end of the semester, they're going to finish their essays. Is that the arc? Uh, <laughs> we're wrapping it up shortly, actually. Oh, so, um, okay. yeah. Within because they're most of them, their deadline is November 1st. So I wanted to get it done and kind of let it rest, and they'll take it from there pretty much. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see what your what the, where this lands. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, Paul will be back next week. So, uh, as always, you're all invited to check back in. Thanks for hosting. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank Good you. Night. Appreciate it. Nice seeing you, Chris. See you, Fred. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.